Hello everyone, this is Christoph here from Inte Studio and I'm back with a grid editor overview with the release of 1.2.26. There is now the element name and overlay in a working condition. We have sharpened up the LEDs and the general indication of the user interface. We have added a couple more encoder special actions like the left rotation, right rotation, and also for the button press and releases, a special mode block kind of action block. Then there is now a grid helper introduced which will have much more functionality later on the notification area has been worked on and also we have added the german keyboard layout if you have some other keyboard layout than hungarian german or english please let us know and we have a format to follow for the different keyboard layouts this comes in handy for the macro input field for the macro action block where if you have like a korean or i don't know what kind of language keyboard then the input recording could work much better with your own uh, keyboard layout so let us know if you have any special keyboards which should be supported we have put in a place in the preferences area where the plugins can be installed later on. The first uh, official plugin we are working on is an Adobe Photoshop plugin. Now when you open up the grid editor you will meet this friendly little helper. Currently under preferences you can give a bit of customization for it and uh, yeah he will be there with his eyes moving in the area where you will have something to do to click on to interact with and yeah it's it will be the base part of a grid editor related a software tour getting started guide and uh, stuff like that so stay tuned for more stuff from this friendly little guy another thing we have added is the element name and element overlay so now if you go out over in it or any of the events you can put in an element name to the action chain and give a name for a control element this area can be written but here whatever is uh, typed in it will be ref reflected here as well and you can turn this on and off uh, to see what's the uh, control elements name now as I have made some changes to the element name I can discard it as well and yeah here is the friendly little creature on the pop up and if I'm discarding now instead of a cursor notification which was following my mouse everywhere now all of the notifications are in this area it's currently uh, making changes to a general uh, layout of the modules we will fix this uh, in a future release but yeah the wall um, notification area has been rewritten so it won't block out user interactions in this left area now about the new special blocks so if we come here to the encoder event on an encoder whether it's an EF44 or an EN16 we can put here a special block left right rotate push and rotate with left and right differentiation or a push and rotate a function so on push and rotate you can see each of the area where you can place a new um, action block for example I have here a simple MIDI block and I want to activate it only while this encoder is pushed and rotated to left. Let's check it in the MIDI monitor as this is a standard MIDI action. This is the third one. So now I'm tweaking left, right. You can hear the clicks, nothing happens and I'm pushing it. The button event was triggered. This is note 144 and if I'm tweaking it left it will now pick up the values but not to the right only to the left so this action block behind the scenes is basically not this but this is basically a bunch of Lua programming stuff behind the scenes here you can read this uh, this huge push and rotate action block and um, you can see what's going behind the scenes. You can also merge this code. Uh, 
This merge as code function comes in really handy if you run low with characters. So under one action, I mean under one event on the action chain, 400 characters are uh, the hard limit currently. So if you merge something as code, then you can spare with a few uh, action block commands. So these sections are the action block uh, differentiators and uh, that can be left out if you are merging the code like this. And you can also like learn how to uh, code grid uh, instead of using the action blocks. Now just to show you another uh, encoder tweaking special block, this is the simple push and rotate. It's uh, a much simpler one than the previous one. You can use this if you want to spare some characters to have a longer configuration or here is the simple rotate left and rotate right uh, variant as well. But if you want to have the both of these then you can come here and oh this is merged now I'm removing it and have this one and uh, use best of both words probably. So that's about the encoder special actions. Beside the special encoder actions we also have some for the button presses which can be used on the EF44 EN16 and the BU16 button module. So wherever you have button events it can be called. So go to a button event and there you will find press and release. And it's basically a differentiator between the button pressed state. It doesn't care about the button value because if you set the button to a different mode and have like more steps then the button value will be changing. For example if I'm using three steps and this simple button event is checking the button value under well and MIDI is sending this value as parameter too then I can check it in MIDI monitor and this is the second one. You see it's like value 0, 42, 84, 126. So this is like the three step uh, or four step um, button we have here. And it's the button value which is changing, not the button state. The button state is when it's pressed down or released. So before this you had to use if conditions and, uh, and if conditions may not be suitable for a quick config or whatever the reason is, now you can just have a press and release differentiator just like that with a special press and release action block. Behind the scenes this one is also a simple Lua code, so if the button state is larger than zero then it's the press state, if it's uh, the different part then it's the button release state. Now let's talk about the last part in this update which is the WebSocket integration. If you go to preferences and open up this uh, enable disable WebSocket monitor option then you will have this small WebSocket monitor. We are using WebSocket to implement our own uh, Photoshop plugin and uh, connect to the Adobe ecosystem, but we are going to use this for other integrations in the future as well, or if you're a developer you can use it also. You can send through here some data uh, from the grid editor to to connect the uh, client applications, like we are hosting here a WebSocket with localhost with this port, and uh, we are sending a grid ping message every few milliseconds and the software, the grid editor expects to receive a grid a ping message back. So it's a ping pong uh, with the, from the server to the client. That's how the editor will know a client is still connected. Uh, if you need any help how you can uh, write your own uh, WebSocket kind of application or integration to grid editor let us know. Uh, probably the best, best place for this would be on our Discord channel. Let me talk a bit about the future development path of Grid Editor. 
For the moment, we are going to put it into a feature freeze position. If there is some uh, critical issue which we have to fix immediately, of course we will jump into this uh, SAP and try our best to roll out the fix. But uh, for now, as a small team, we are going to put our focus into a new hardware product development, which will be a USB MIDI host converter kind of little gadget. So editor won't see new features uh, for some time, but it won't be a forgotten thing, because we heard many valuable feedback on how we could improve the user experience and we want to commit on this to make this project much better. But for now a few words on this USB uh, MIDI host device. It will be like uh, this sized and it will have some inputs and uh, outputs. I can't really uh, put them together. I'm not sure if my camera is focusing or not, but you can see here is the part where it will have a power on, a USB-C port and the TRS jacks. So it will be able to process uh, MIDI in and MIDI out on TRS to connect with analog gear and it will have a USB-A port and uh, some indicator LEDs. It won't only work with grid controllers but with, uh, but with uh, any MIDI controller basically. That's our plan and uh, yeah, this will be a great addition to grid because in the software world uh, we think that uh, grid has many possibilities. Um, but on the other hand, it has the neat feature that whatever is configured with the grid editor, it can be saved onto grid and grid as a small processing unit can work on its own. And that is really powerful uh, by, using with, uh, by using grid with hardware. But for now, there wasn't much of an option to connect grid to hardware, so yeah. This little gadget will help us in that. Pre-orders will open soon, once we have run a successful prototype round. And uh, you can follow us on socials, stuff like that, to stay in the loop. That's it for this uh, update video, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.